Hello friends and welcome back. In this lecture, we will write a program and use the account class. And here is the program. First of all, we want to create the following account object. So this over here is a UML representation for an object. First of all, we see the name of the object and then we put a colon and then the type of the object. So this object is called test account and its type is an account. Now over here, we can see the values of the attributes of the object. So the ID should be equal to 1,122, the balance should be equal to 20,000, and the annual interest rate should be 4.5. After we create the object, we want to withdraw 2,500 from the account, and then we want to deposit 3,000. And finally, we will print the account's information. So we will print the ID, the balance, the annual interest rate, and the date created. So pause the video and implement this program. Now let's go to IntelliJ. So first of all, we want to create the object. So the object is of type account. And as you can see, we can use the account class. It is called test account. And let's instantiate it. So new account. This is the value for the ID. And this is the value for the balance. And finally, 4.5 is the interest rate. After that, we want to withdraw 2,500. So this is our object and we'll use the dot operator. So we want to withdraw 2,500, all right? Like this. Now, as you know, this method returns a boolean. So let's say if, and inside this if, we will call the method. So if the method returns true, this means that the operation was successful. So inside this if statement, let's print withdraw successful. And if the withdraw is not successful, let's print that it wasn't successful. Like this. After that, we want to deposit 3000 to the account. So test account dot deposit, and we'll pass 3000. And finally, we want to print all the information about the account. First of all, let's print the ID. So test account dot get ID. We will concatenate it with a space. And then let's print the balance. So test account dot get balance. And finally, let's concatenate a space with the annual interest rate. So test account dot get annual interest rate. Let me break this into multiple lines like this. Let's try the program, run it. And this is the output. As you can see, the withdrawal was successful because the amount is less than the balance. And this is the information of the account. And as you can see, the balance is correct. First of all, we withdraw 2,500 and then we deposit 3,000. So this is the remaining balance. Now let's go over here and try to withdraw 20,000. Now run the program again. Now the remaining balance is only 3,000. And of course, the withdrawal is successful. So when we make the withdraw operation, the remaining balance is zero. And after that, we deposit 3,000. Now let's try to withdraw 2,100, for example, like this. Now run the program. And as you can see, the withdraw is not successful because the amount to be withdrawn is greater than the balance. So the balance will not be changed and it will remain 20,000. And after that, we'll deposit 3,000. So the total remaining balance is 23,000. Now I noticed that we forgot to print the date created. So let's go over here. Let's concatenate a space. And after that, we will concatenate test.getDateCreated like this. So now let's run the program and have a look over here. This is the date created. Let me tell you what's happening exactly over here. As you know, the getDateCreated method is going to return a date object. Let me show you. Press Ctrl and then press on the name of the method and this will take us to the code of the method. And as you can see, this method returns a date which is the attribute dateCreated, all right? So dateCreated will be returned over here and you are going to concatenate it with a space and print it, right? So under the hood, Java is going to call the toString method of the date object. So it will look like this. All right, and this over here is the string representation of a date object. Let me run the program again, and you will see that we have the same output. And this is it. Now let's try another method over here, type two, and as you can see, we have to local string. Let's try this method. It is crossed out because it is deprecated. This means that it is not recommended anymore to use this method. But for our purposes, this is fine. Now let's run the program, and now have a look at the date. In my case, it appears like this. In your case, it might look different, all right? Now let's try one final method. So over here, type two, and let's choose to GMT string. Now run the program, and over here, we can see the date as a GMT string. And this is it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.